Thank you, Bill. Acting Secretary, Ted, welcome. Thank Dave, welcome. And to you. all your staff here from the Department of Human Services, welcome. And also to our guests that are here, and I see many familiar faces in the audience, and uh, I see up Harrisburg a lot advocating on behalf of the people that we all care about the most. So thank you all for being here. Ted, I've always said your job is the toughest job of anybody in Harrisburg. So all the best and good luck to you. And just, <laughs> I'm looking forward to working with you and your staff in the months and the years ahead. So, so welcome. Um, I'm going to start out with Medicaid expansion. Okay. It's an issue that has been near and dear to my heart for a number of years. Um, I want to thank you, and I want to thank Governor Wolf for the decision to expand Medicaid here in Pennsylvania. I think it's absolutely the right thing to do for all the right reasons. Uh, I also want to thank you because in this transition between Healthy PA and Medicaid expansion starting in the 1st of December, there was a enormous problem, especially on the behavioral health side of Medicaid with people who had lost their benefits. And I'm not quite sure how many people in the state. I think it's in the tens of thousands. Uh, but you have worked really closely with the providers. And I know, I don't know if it's completely solved, but I know it's a long way to being solved. And I want to personally thank you for doing that. It was really, really important. Thank you. It's very kind. Thank yep, you. Yep. Um, could you just give us a short update on what's going on with the Medicaid expansion and the transition, and uh, uh, particularly interested in the private coverage option and when those folks are going to get transitioned over into the expanded Medicaid? Sure. Uh, the, when the governor announced the transition to a traditional Medicaid expansion, the first thing that happened was, and that was the day that he made the announcement, um, I sent a letter to uh, CMS withdrawing the healthy option. Okay. Healthy PA, which was the previous uh, program, was divided into basically three pieces. It was healthy, the healthy, the healthy plus option, and the private coverage option, or the PCO. What the Medicaid expansion is going to do is take those three pieces and consolidate it into one streamlined adult package. Package. That package will look a lot like um, the traditional health choices package with a few tweaks along the way. Um, the traditional health choices package that has served Pennsylvania for many years. We think this will make the program a lot simpler, um, a lot more streamlined, and it'll help folks get in touch with doctors when they need it and get a lot of the bureaucracy that was there out of the way. Um, in terms of doing that, the next step in the process will occur on April 27th. And that will be, um, there'll be some IT changes to our systems, and there'll be some changes to our policies that will move, will start to move the first group of folks from the private coverage option to health choices, to the new streamlined adult package. So there are about, and this number changes on a day-to-day -day basis. Some folks come in, some folks leave. There are folks in general assistance category and folks who are in a plan called, in uh, something called select plan. There are about 115 to 120,000 of those folks. They will move over to the health choices plan. That leaves about 90,000, it might be a little more by the time we get there, that will still be in the private coverage option. After April 27th, we'll begin a process, and uh, I've tried to stress an orderly and efficient process, to move these folks from the private coverage option to health choices. That will occur over a period of time and will be done by September. So our hope is that we'll have the whole process done uh, by September. We're trying to do it in pieces for a couple reasons. Uh, when we implemented uh, Healthy PA, I think some of the speed at which it was implemented caused some, uh, some confusion, and I think you had mentioned the drug and alcohol folks, and caused some uh, disruption in people's lives. We're trying to make this change with the minimum amount of disruption for people going forward, mm -hmm. and we want to try to make it as clear as possible to people what is happening. So for most people, what we said is, and for everybody is, until you hear from the department, you don't have to do anything. Your health care coverage doesn't change. You can go see your doctor. When we start notifying you, that's when we'll start making the switch to health choices. And in most cases, you'll go from the PCO coverage 
from a provider to the MCO or the, Medica the Medicaid uh, coverage for that provider. So that will hopefully happen all the way across uh, in September. Now, the reason we can do this in a relatively short period of time is because of the infrastructure that was built for Healthy PA. So I know some folks had questioned, well, what happened to the investment that we made in Healthy PA? We had spent a lot of money on IT systems. And the reason why I can say that we're going to make that switch on April 27th this year and not next year is we're going to be using a lot of that IT infrastructure, that investment. We're going to leverage that investment to the changes we have. The IT changes that we're making will cost us, in state funds, will only cost us a you know, relatively small amount of $800,000. That'll be matched with some federal funds. But uh, compared to the, I think it was $95 million invested in building the system, the reason that we can build, it, we can move as quickly as we can is we're taking that system that was built for Health EPA and making some changes to the eligibility logic. So that'll allow us to move quickly and also with a, a minimum amount of expense. A and I'm sure I trust that when this transition takes place, the same problems that popped up with the Health EPA will not pop up with the transition into the expanded Medicaid. Right. So every implementation will have its hiccups, but our, our process is designed to inform people as many times as we can. We have a website, healthchoicespa.com, that we update with the information that's there. And we're trying to get the information out to stakeholders, to uh, recipients, to providers, to everyone, so they know what's happened. We've met with every MCO along the way. We've talked to them about the transition. They're well aware of what's going on and the steps they need to take on their end to make sure that they're complying with the change uh, set by the government. Yeah. One, one problem I'm seeing on the short term with the PCO coverage uh, that's Act 106 coverage for drug and alcohol. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that some of the, the insurers are not uh, covering the people under Act 106. Uh, I don't know if you've got any complaints, uh, but my understanding is you're going to get some today and, and in the coming week. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the private coverage option people, uh, insurance companies are not honoring the 106 benefit. So. Right. So part of the part of the issue we dealt with is what you mentioned before, and thank you again for the kind words. Was moving some of the folks that were uh, that were put in the wrong place under Healthy PA to what is what was then the Healthy PA, the Healthy Plus option, which is now Health Choices. Moving folks to that to get them the coverage they need. As folks are still enrolling in the program right now, before we make that switch on April 27th, we may still have that problem. We're working through those on a case-by-case -case basis as we, we become aware of them. I got, a, I got a, a couple of them today in my email that we made sure we're taking care of. Okay. And just to remind everybody, I mean, with this Medicaid expansion, we're going to insure five to 600,000 Pennsylvanians. And I think the important part about this is that there are people who are in the workforce that have no coverage. They're working. And Everybody's concerned about veterans. In the state of Pennsylvania right now, there are probably about 50,000 of our veterans who are uninsured. Mm -hmm. Medicaid expansion will cover at least half of the 50,000 veterans who have no insurance. Absolutely the right thing to do. Just a couple more questions and sure. just comments. Uh, there was, a number of years ago, an autism advisory board mm -hmm. in the office of ODP. Um, I believe uh, Secretary Alexander disbanded that board. Uh, I would like for you to seriously consider uh, starting that board again. I think it was really beneficial. I think all the providers liked the assistance that the board provided. So I would like you to consider uh, take, taking a look at that and doing it. So actually, I've already met with the autism advocates, and they brought up the same issue with me. At that meeting, I, I asked our deputy secretary for developmental programs and Nina Walcote, who's our uh, autism director, to come up with a plan to increase the number of times I get to meet with autism okay. advocates. One final note, and I'm going to hand you this. I know we have a meeting next week. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my House Bill uh, 183. Uh, it deals with the uh, Human Service Block Grant mm -hmm. uh, that we now have in 30 counties in the state. Yep. And it's kind of like uh, my idea for an alternative to the Block Grant. Okay. I'd like you to take a look at it. I think it makes an, an awful lot of sense. It allows the counties at the end of the fiscal year, instead of being able to move the money around, if they have unspent money at the end of the fiscal year, to be able to carry that money over into the following fiscal year and then be able to use it and move it around in any way. I think this makes all the sense in the world. Um, okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand this to you, give it to you, and uh, you'll just take a look at it, and all we right. can discuss it next I week. I will take a look at it after the hearing. Hey. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman.